money. Luke chapter 16, it says, Now the Pharisees who were little lovers of money listened to what Jesus said and scoffed at him. What did they scoff at? When Jesus said in verse 13, You cannot love God and wealth. You cannot serve God and wealth. Ah! I said, what nonsense. Look at us, we are serving God and money. They scoffed at him because they were lovers of money and they thought they could love God at the same time. I want to say to you, if you miss out all the other 49 characteristics and you have escaped all 49, the Holy Spirit will catch you at this one and say, here is the proof you are a Pharisee. Any one of these 50 characteristics will mark out a man as a Pharisee. That's why we have preached as much against loving money as we have against judging people in the church through the years. It's not a new message. You cannot love God and love the things of this earth at the same time. You can use the things of the earth. Do you know that God gave us things to use and people to love? But unfortunately, the world, they love things and use people for their own advantage. That is the world. They love things and use people. Jesus came to turn the world right side up and taught us to love people and use things. Use things to bless people. That's the greatest thing. It doesn't matter if you can deny yourself something so that somebody else can have it better. That's how Jesus lived. And I have seen one thing. Some of the biggest legalists in our churches, and a lot of them are elder brothers, they love money like anything. How do I know? By their fruit you shall know them. They stack up money, but they are legalists when it comes to little, little rules for other people. But they are fantastic lovers of money. They go after money wherever they can get more. They will even neglect their responsibilities in the church to make more money. Because their mind is always on that. And they are Pharisees only towards other people. Making rules for other people. That is why I say to the general congregation, please don't just swallow everything your elder says. 95% of them I've discovered are legalists. Don't follow their silly rules unless you want to mess up your own life. Come to the freedom in Christ and if you see 5% area where he is following Jesus, follow him in that area and forget all the other areas. It's very, very important. It's sad that it has to come to this, but after so many years I'm just sick and tired of all the legalism and the judgmentalism and the silly little rules that all types of people have made through the years which they've imposed on others. Now I'm not against their keeping it themselves. Yeah, so that's just... Uh, another indication of Phariseeism. We've spoken a lot about that. We don't want to continue on that. Number 36. Luke chapter 18 and verse 9. He thanks God. A Pharisee thanks God that he's better than others. And Luke chapter 18, you know the story of the Pharisee and the tax collector. There are a number of points we can see here. The first of all, that he thanks God that he's better than others. Luke 18 verse 9. He told this parable to some people who were trusted in themselves and he said in verse 11, God, I thank you, Luke 18, 11, God, I thank you that I am not like other people. Now he didn't say this. You know, it says here he prayed to himself. He was saying in his heart, None of us will openly stand up and say, God, I thank you, I'm not like people in that group and the other group, because you lose your reputation for humility. We all want a reputation for humility so much, we'll never say that in public. But in our heart, we think, oh, thank God, I'm not like those other people who behave like that, who dress like that. You know, you've heard me use this example. Supposing a man comes home and his wife is absolutely angry and furious and yells at him and screams at him and he stands there like a holy man keeping quiet doesn't lose his temper quietly goes away and thinks in his heart Lord I thank you I'm not like my wife 
who is losing your temper. I've got victory over anger. You know, your wife may be a million times better than you in God's eyes at that moment. Because she lost her temper and she, nobody can lose their temper and not be convicted about it. Afterwards she will repent. But you, you will never repent of your Phariseeism. And she is more acceptable to God at that moment than you who think, I thank God, I've got victory. Yes, you overcame anger, you got out of a ten-foot pit called anger and you fell into a thousand-foot pit called spiritual pride. Is that victory? To come out of a ten-foot pit? to fall into a thousand foot pit but your wife is still in the ten foot pit and you are in the thousand foot pit who is better? I mean ask a kindergarten student they'll tell you who is better there's a lot of this you know spiritual pride is like an onion have you tried peeling an onion? you take off one layer I finished with the onion really? there's another layer underneath you take off that one there's another one underneath you take off that one, there's another one underneath. You've heard the story. If you haven't heard it, I must tell you. Most of you may have heard this. I've said it before. The Sunday school teacher who taught the story of the Pharisee and the tax collector to people, to the children, and said, you know, the Pharisee said, uh, I thank God I'm not like the tax collector. Isn't that bad, children? Thank God we are not like the Pharisee. And we laugh at that and say, thank God we are not like the Sunday school teacher. <laughs> it's an onion. Layer after layer after layer. You can't get to the bottom. Be honest. I'll tell you something I've discovered. There are two sins I'll never be free from till Jesus comes. Pride and selfishness. It's layer after layer. It's become much thinner in my life, both those areas. But I discover lots and lots of areas in my life and I'm determined before Jesus comes to make that onion as thin as possible. Selfishness and pride. If you're working on it and you acknowledge it, there's hope for you. If you imagine that you're free from selfishness and pride, God have mercy on you. Please don't be an elder brother anywhere. That's all I ask you. You'll destroy your church.